Dear God, our Father, we thank you once more for being an awesome and a great God that you are. The fact that you sit high and you look low to everything that's going on. Not only do you see it, Master, but you control it. You make it do what you want it to do. And we thank you for being that kind of a God. The good news is that you, you never change. You've been the same from the beginning of this world till this very second. We thank you, Father, for being who you are. And we thank you for all these brothers that are either on the line or here in person, those that are on Facebook, watching on Facebook Live. We thank you for every brother. Continue to bless and keep each and every one of us. Help us to be the men of God you call for us to be. We pray that you bless our families and bless our homes, that we will bring glory to you in all things. Then, Master, we come praying for Brother RV now. Pray that you would have mercy on him now. We understand you know what's best for him. So we're going to trust you in what you do in his life. We pray for Brother Edward Wheaton in the same manner, Master. Continue to touch his body, touch his mind, Master. That he would understand that you're in control of his life. That you're going to do what you need to do in his life, Master. We pray for Brother Dave Callahan, Master. Continue to meet him where he's at. That he would continue to find strength in you. Then, Master, we pray there are so many others we could call on, call by name. You know us all, and you know what every one of us are going through. So we pray now that we would get, you would give us the faith that we need to endure these times that you have us living, Master. And we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory in everything we say and do. Now, Master, we need you to speak to our hearts this morning. We need you to speak loudly and speak clearly that we will hear what you have to say and begin to live our lives according to your word, your will, and your ways, Master. That our lives will bring you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. All right, brothers, we're going to use the same. We're using the same outline today that we've been using the last three weeks. Uh, we're going to try to finish up today. I'm not promising nothing. If I don't finish, that means you've got to finish on your own. <laughs> we're going to try to finish up today. Uh, we're Joshua chapter 5. We're going to look at verse 10 through 15 today. We know of the past, over the past three weeks, we looked at the success for the nation of Israel is dependent on their. Uh, dependent on their, them obediently renewing their commitment to God. We, we understand that they understand that God is their God. He's the one that has called them out as a nation, and He's bringing them to a land that He's promised them. So they recommit to their relationship with him as being their God. And the way they do it is through obediently doing what he's called for them to do. Uh, next, we, on our outline, we looked at the success for the nation of Israel is dependent on their renewal of their covenant with, with God. Now, their covenant is that, that promise that God has made through Abraham and through Moses of what he was going to do through that nation for that nation and in that nation. And they had to renew that covenant. We know one thing that, that was part of the Abrahamic covenant was they had to be circumcised. Eight days after birth, all the males would be circumcised. And during the 39 years of wandering in the wilderness, the nation of Israel did not hold up their part of the covenant in circumcising their males. So when Joshua and the nation of Israel get to the land of Jericho right before they enter into, uh, they have to circumcise every male. So now in, in, in recommitting to their covenant with God, they, they circumcise every male uh, just before they go in. But now today we're going to look at their, their, uh, the success for the nation of Israel is dependent on their renewal of their celebration of God's mighty acts the renewal of their celebration of God's mighty acts. We know what our premise verses are. The, the three verses that we use as premise verses 
It's Joshua 1, 7, 8, and 9. He says, only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. All right, let's look at uh, Joshua 5 and verse 10. He says, while the sons of Israel camped at Gilgal, they observed the Passover on the evening of the fourth day of the month on the desert plains of Jericho. On our handout, it says, the nation of Israel celebrates the night of God's deliverance of them from slavery in Egypt for only the second time since leaving Egypt. You, we, 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 we remember when they were in Egypt and they had cried out to God for 400 years and God comes to deliver them. And he tells them, he says, listen, I'm going to send a death angel through, but what you need to do is put, kill a lamb, celebrate the Passover. And what the Passover is, they put blood on the lintel and the doorpost that when the death angel went through Egypt, he would pass over their house. And whoever did not have the blood on the doorpost on the lintel, the firstborn in the house was dying. So now, he told them that night, eat that lamb with unleavened bread, have your sandals on and your clothes on because you're going to have to leave in a hurry. So now when they get in the wilderness, they only celebrated Passover one time. When God called them to Mount Sinai, they, they celebrated Passover when God met them there. And that was the only time in 40 years, other than when they were in Egypt, that they celebrated the Passover. Now they do it for the second time. You have the initial time, the first time, and now this is the second time they celebrate it. But look at what's about to happen. There, they actually have conquered some of the promised land. Now they're going in to get the rest that God has promised them. But before they go in, they make a decision to renew our commitment to celebrating what God has done for us. No, no, no. What, what, they, what they do, they're celebrating the fact that God has delivered them from, say, from, from uh, slavery. They're celebrating the fact that God had, uh, had done a, a mighty act in causing that death angel to, cro to pass over Egypt and, and spare their lives just by the sight of blood. So they're celebrating it. They hadn't done it in 39 years. So now they renew their commitment to celebrate who God is and what he's done in their life. Now, my question is this. Just because we, in, we ain't been able to come here for 25, 24 weeks now, Man. is this the first time we celebrate? Because I say we need to renew our commitment. Have we stopped celebrating because our, our situation has changed? Have we stopped celebrating because our place of celebration has changed? No, no. No, we no. should not. No. no. We, we cannot follow the example of the Israelites, or the nation of Israel. But they put off all they had been, God had taught them, and the, that they had committed to doing until they was going to get in the promised land. You know, you know what? Uh, there, there are some Christians that say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to shout. But we can't get them to say nothing while they're down here. My encouragement to you, if, if you've made a commitment based on the covenant we have with Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed on the cross, we ought to recommit to celebrating the mighty acts of God. They, 
Think about everything it took for God to get the children of Israel to this point in their life. To, to, to the, the two miles outside of Jericho. Think about what it took. First, he gets them out of Egypt with a dead angel. That, that, that didn't blow me away. But what blew me away is they were slaves, but they left Egypt rich. Because they, they, they got gold, they got silver, they got clothing, they got animals, they got livestock. They got all they needed when they left Egypt. Amen. <laughs> Hold on, Mike. You, you're, getting in, you're getting ahead of me now. Hold on. So, so, so now, not, not only did he get them out of Egypt, but in, in, when Pharaoh started chasing them and they got to the Red Sea, God opens the Red Sea and they cross on dry land. The mighty acts of God. And then once they've all crossed over and Pharaoh's army is in the middle of the sea, God closes the Red Sea and drowns Pharaoh's army. The mighty acts of God. That, that, that would be enough, right? But then they get in the wilderness and they start complaining about they ain't got no food. And God rains down manna in the morning and brings quail in the evening. The mighty acts of God. And then they, they, they start complaining. The water was bitter. Moses dropped the tree in there. Well, guess what? The water turned sweet. Then they got to another point. They were thirsty again. Ain't no water in this place. We're in the wilderness. There ain't no water. Moses hits the rock. And the rock flows out water. That's the mighty acts of God. So now they've, they've gotten to the Jericho real Jericho. They've gotten to the uh, uh, Jordan River, and, and uh, they got across. It's swollen. It's flooded. But they have to cross. God dries up the Jordan River about 20 miles away, and they cross over on dry land. Now they're on the other side of the Jordan River. Y'all remember when Moses was getting ready to go into Egypt the first time, and the angel showed up, the angel was going to kill him because he hadn't circumcised his son. Here are over 2 million people, and none of the males are circumcised. God could have wiped them out right then because they were not holding up their edge their end of the covenant, but he spared their lives. He directed them to circumcise those males. That's the mighty acts of God, y'all. We, we take what God does for us so lightly that we don't, we don't examine everything that he causes to happen in our life as a mighty act. Listen, the fact that we can see each other today, even if you're seeing me on a TV screen or phone or computer, in person, or you can hear my voice on the phone, that's a mighty act of God. Only him. So the, the children of Israel, they recommit by celebrating what God has done for them. Listen, the fact that God has set them free was enough for them to celebrate. Listen, this, this is what really got me. The people are celebrating here were never slaves. All the slaves died in the wilderness. Amen. These children were born in freedom. Yet they celebrated what God had done for those that were in slavery. Man, that, that, that's a black, black sermon right there, ain't it? Amen. I ain't never experienced slavery. All white men chasing me down, trying to hang me. But I show celebrate the fact that God allowed those before me to go through it, and, and they survived in order that I would get here. It's only God. My mom used to tell us a story of my grandfather. Uh, him and one of his brothers, they accused them of, ra of raping a woman. And they, uh, they chased my grandfather all night long through the cornfields, through the rice fields. Him and his brother was running all night long 
try not to get caught, because if they were caught, wouldn't be no Timothy Johnson right now. But God spared his life. Because you, I know he spared him because I, I, I remember him living with us. It, it's the mighty acts of God. Uh, so, so the children of Israel make a, a, a commitment. Now, look what they do. It says in verse 10, while the sons of Israel camped at Gilgal, they, they observed the Passover on the evening of the 14th day of the month on the desert plains of Jericho. Listen, remember, remember last week we talked about God slowed them down and, and circumcised all those males. So while they got time to heal, they got time to praise. So a lot of times we, we, we're beat up and bruised from life, but we don't take time to praise. We want to wallow in our sorrow and, and complain about our pain. But when, really, when God slows, man, that's, listen, listen. When God slows you down, he expects you to recognize what he's done for you and celebrate that. Listen, he done slowed us way down. Amen. We can't go nowhere. We can't do nothing. And some of us still ain't recognized that God is calling for us to celebrate what he's done in our lives. Amen. So they take the time. They, 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 they're healing anyway. So they kill, they kill the lamb and celebrate the Passover while they're waiting. And listen, they're not just waiting to heal, but they're waiting for the next direction from God. Amen. They're waiting for God to tell them what to do next. While they're waiting, they celebrate. All right, look at verse 11 now. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, on the day, on that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. Verse 12, the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten some of the produce of the land, so that the sons of Israel no longer had manna but ate some of the yield of the land of Canaan during that time. The nation of Israel celebrates God's deliverance to the promised land by eating the food from the land. Listen, God had been feeding them for 39 years. While they was wandering in the wilderness, God had been feeding them every day in the morning and in the evening. And they were dependent on God to feed them. They weren't even asking for food no more because they knew God was going to provide in the morning and in the evening. And all they had to do was just pick up what he provided and eat it. So now look at the children of Israel. Now they've been dependent, the nation of Israel, they've been dependent on God's providing for them. Now they're in, getting into the promised land, getting ready to go to battle for the first time. And not only do they realize God provides stuff for them, but God also provides intellectual stuff for them. Because they got the sense to know, wow, here we are among all this good food. We ain't got to wait on God to provide for us no more. We can go pick our own food now. That's what the, that's what the verse says. It says, on the day after the Passover, the day after they celebrated the Passover, on that very, the very next day, they ate some of the produce of the land. Before they got, listen, okay, let, let, who causes plants to grow? God does. God, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they grow in his earth. They use his rain, his sunlight for them to grow to produce fruit, right? So now, He's already provided for the nation of Israel before they got there. The plants were already growing. The fruit was already on the tree. The grapes were already on the vines when they got there. He had been feeding them for 39 years. But now they get to the promised land. He gives them enough sense to know we ain't got to wait for God to feed us no more. We got food right here that God done provided for us. Wow. 
Listen, there's nothing we go through in life. There's no place that God brings us to in life that he does not provide for us before we even get there. Oh, I done messed up now. He provided for us for 2020 before we got here. We just had to use the intelligence that he gave us to survive in 2020. Yeah. Oh, let me say it again, Brother Ben. He provided for us before we even got to 2020. We just had to have the intelligence to use what he has provided. And guess what? He gave us the intelligence. And we're, that Christians are complaining, saying, I wish 2020 would just go. Guess what? 2021 coming. And in 2021, it's going to have its own situations, its own problems. So even if it goes, guess what? God has provided for us with stuff and intelligence to handle whatever's going to happen in 2021. But we got to believe that in 2020. Listen, it ain't, it, ain't, it ain't by accident that somebody created this, the cell phone, because God knew in 2020 everybody was going to need one. I, I think I got my first cell phone, and I got it from my job in 1998. And it was a big old phone. I had to hang it on the side of my belt loop in order to carry it. it wasn't putting, I wasn't putting it in my pocket. But that was God already preparing us for 2020. Facebook came around when, Zach? 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005. It ain't by accident that that came around, y'all. God was providing for what we were going to need in 2020. We got to see this, that this is not just something that happened. God had already provided for us to live during this time. And we need to celebrate him by using our intelligence to use what he's provided. Man, if we just sit back and say, oh, 2020 is hell on me. I ain't doing nothing. You've turned your back on God. You've abandoned what God wants to do in and through you. Yes, sir. Self to give. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. God, he provides so miraculous. Because you know what? I had a problem this week. My wife kept bothering me. You need to make sure the generator works. You need to make sure this works. You need to. I'm like, I ain't worried about this stuff. God going to take care of us. But, but because he's given me the intelligence to use what he's already provided for me, I went out there Tuesday evening. I worked on that thing and crank, vroom, vroom. I, I, wait, I waited until she got home so she knew it rained. <laughs> it ran, I let it run for a while. I run for a while. I cut it off. I let it set for a minute. I started it up again. Vroom, vroom. Let it run, let it run, let it run. Because God had already provided it for me. And you know when I got it? After, uh, I, no, after Katrina and, no, what was the one with Katrina Campbell? We got the Katrina and, and Rita, yeah. That's when I got it. And, and it, it is amazing. I ain't going to even tell y'all the story how I got it, but I got it. And it came after, after the storms were over, and I had never used it. I ain't never had to use it since I had it. <laughs> God provides. But, but if I need it, I understand 
God has already provided it for me, and he's given me the intelligence to keep up with it and make it run. Listen, so here the, children, here the nation of Israel. Uh, let, let me slow down. Any questions? Because I'm trying to finish today. Any questions? Well, uh, this is Brother Bledsoe here. Yes, sir, Brother Matt. I was just thinking, I was just thinking uh, about uh, the story book is coming up and everything, and I know we know myself uh, up at uh, uh, that wind, well, the past Thursday morning, about 2 in the morning, and I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for the, uh, to hit the sunning and the lightning and all that stuff. So I got tired. I, I just went on bed because uh, I, I'm sitting like this here. In my mind, I, I can't see the snow coming this way. For some reason, I, I just didn't um, have that, um, that that feel I had with the, the ATV there, and everybody was up in there like it was holiday, like it was holiday, you know? Yeah. Buying this, buying that, you know? Yeah. And I talked to one of the ladies that worked there, and I say, I, I think I should, should I buy it? They should, no, don't buy that stuff. It's going to be all right. So <laughs> I didn't buy anything, and I came home because she said, these people buying all this water. Say, I hope they're serious because they're going to end up having to drink all this water. And uh, so uh, it was just amazing that uh, I woke up and nothing. The sun come out shining and uh, it just passed over by the grace of God. By the grace of God, right. Not, but listen to this, Brother yeah. Max. Yeah. If God allowed you to get the water, get the bread, or whatever else you felt you needed for the stone, if one of those other two that's coming up happens to come to Houston, you already pre pre prepared for it. God has already, that, and that's what I want you all to get. God has provided us ahead of time with what we need for this time. If you don't get nothing else, get that. God has provided for us ahead of time what we need right now. And he's given us the intelligence. That's the part we can't miss. Some of us are not using the intelligence that God has given us. We're not taking advantage of 2020 and the exercise of all the time and intelligence God has given you. We're doing foolish things when we ought to be glorifying God, when we ought to be celebrating God and his mighty acts that he's even got us to this point. There are some families that have buried multiple members of their families in the last five months. And some of us hadn't buried one yet. That's the mighty acts of God. And listen, this is the other side of that. If you have buried multiple members of your family and they believed in Jesus Christ, that's the mighty acts of God. And, and, and the other side of that is this. If, they, if you have buried many family members, they did not believe in Jesus Christ. Guess what? They ain't got, no, no, they ain't got to deal with this world no more. Mighty acts of God. And we need to celebrate what he's done for us. I think the problem is we want to celebrate too much stuff. We want to celebrate him for stuff. We want to celebrate him for a car. We want to celebrate him for a house. We want to celebrate him for a food. When that's not the biggest thing God has done for you in your life. L look at the handout says, the nation of Israel celebrated the Passover only for the third time. The first time in Egypt, the night of the death angel would pass over the houses marked with blood of the lamb. The last time at Mount Sinai, 39 years earlier. New covenant believers should not wait for any particular day or season, let me, let me put this in there too, or place to celebrate God's mighty acts in our life. Listen, they were in a new and a strange place. This group of the nation of Israel had never been in this land before. They were born in the wilderness. Amen. This is a totally new place that they're in. But they renew their commitment to God by celebrating who he is in a totally new New place. That, now, 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 I'm, I'm messy now. Because some of us are sitting at, or, or laying at home 
And I'm not saying sitting because some of us are still in the bed. And, and, and we refuse to celebrate because we can't come to 7818 or whatever your church address is, church, let me, church building address is. I don't have a problem celebrating because I celebrate Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Well, let's go back to the handout. To the Romans... The Apostle Paul writes, but God, now this is the greatest thing that we as, as New Covenant believers have, but God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were yet, yeah, sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. Listen, that house you live in, that car you drive, that food you eat, that neighborhood you live in is not what ought to cause you to celebrate God's mighty acts. What ought to cause you to celebrate God's mighty acts is that when you was a sinner, he didn't wait till you got yourself together. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. That's what we ought to be celebrating. Every day, every hour, every minute, every second, that ought to drive our life, the fact that Christ died for us. The nation of Israel is eating fruit and vegetables from the land, land. That's just a byproduct of what God had done in his miraculous mighty acts. See, too many times we want to worship the byproducts of salvation and not worship the reason for salvation to start with. We want, we want to celebrate the choir singing. We want to celebrate the preacher preaching, but we're not celebrating the fact that Jesus died for us. He didn't die for himself. And not only did he die for us, but he justified us. He made us right by his blood. Listen, the nation of Israel celebrating the fact that they put the blood on the doorpost and the lintel and the death angel passed over. We ought to be celebrating the fact that we've been covered with the blood of Jesus. Amen. And, and that death angel brought wrath through Egypt. And, and God would bring wrath through our life had we not been covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Then Apostle Paul also writes back on our hand. He writes to the Corinthians. You've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Celebrate the fact that you've been bought. Jesus paid it all. And all to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed us white as snow. We owe him. And all God wants us from, want from us is that we celebrate what he's done in our life. Don't Listen, don't wait till Facebook Live at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings to celebrate what God has done in your life. Celebrate it every day, all day. Because you know what? When God makes a promise, a covenant, he never changes. He never breaks that covenant. He always holds his end of the deal up. So it, it, it was over 2,000 years ago when Christ hung on the cross, God made a promise that he would, 
He would keep us in his, his perfect peace. He would keep us in salvation. Guess what? 2,000 years later, God is still keeping his promise. He ain't went back on his word. So, so if he was to call, uh, call us home because of COVID-19, guess what? He already has made preparations for us. That's some good news, y'all. Some good news. So here, here Joshua and, 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 and the nation of Israel is getting ready to go into Jericho. They were ready to go and start fighting. They, they, they recommitted through to God. They, they recommitted to the covenant they had with God. They recommitted through celebration of, of God. Now they, they, they ready now. They, they figured they've covered all their bases, right? We're ready to go now. We're ready to fight. We done healed from our circumcision. We're ready to go get it. Verse 13 says, Now it came about when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man was standing opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversary? The, the success for the nation of Israel is dependent on their reliance on God's leadership because they are fighting a holy war. Listen, as believers in Jesus Christ, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against evil and principalities in high places. What we are fighting is not a physical war with Donald J. Trump, but we are fighting a spiritual war. It is a holy war that we're fighting. Look, Joshua is ready to go in there because he said, you know what? I I've been fighting all my life. When, when, when Moses went to battle, get Guess, guess who was leading it? It was me, Joshua. I was, I was out front fighting. I'm a fighter. I'm ready to go. But then he sees this man, and this man is what, what it, 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 that appears to Joshua is a theophany. Well, a theophany is a, a visible manifestation of humankind to God, of God, um, to humankind of God. A visible manifestation to humankind of God. And this man ready for battle. And Joshua sees him. You know, Joshua, he done got the truth ready. We finna go. And he sees this man. He says, uh-oh. I got to find out about this fella. He don't look like us. I don't know if he with them or if he with us. So he runs up to him and asks him a question. Are you with us or against us? Are you with us? Are against us. But look what the man, look what the man says. He said, No. No. I ain't with y'all. I ain't with them. No. I, I ain't with you, Josh. I'm not following your lead. Neither am I following the Jericho people lead. Look what he says. Rather, I indeed come now as captain of the host of the Lord. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and bowed down and said to him, What has my Lord to say to his servant? The man informs Joshua he is, he is there as captain of the host of the Lord. Look, I ain't coming to fight for you or the people of Jericho. I'm here fighting and leading God's army. But what, what the man was really telling Joshua, listen, you think you finna go to battle. I'm going to be the one doing the fighting. You think you finna go and conquer Jericho. But, but you got to understand something. The promise that God made to Abraham was that he was going to give you the land. So if God's going to give you anything, you ain't got to do nothing to get it. So I'm here to carry out God's order in order that God would give you the land. Man, so many battles. We fighting people, and we need to stop fighting people. We, we done, we, we've been with our spouses and our kids and our houses now for, for four months, five months, and we fighting them. We need to stop fighting them because God 
don't want us fighting. He wants to fight for us. We've been, we've been, we've been, we've been battling, just, just, just wearing ourselves out. But God said, I'm going to fight for you. Yeah, it's, it's not ours, it's the Lord's. And, and as Christians, we need to understand this. In, 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 in this world, in which we're, in which we're using 2020 as an excuse not to do what God has called us to do. We're, we're not sharing the gospel because we got the excuse. Well, I can't go nowhere. I can't see nobody. It's social distancing. But you remember the lepers? On the side of the road, when they saw Jesus coming, Jesus, he didn't even touch him. He told him, go show yourself to the priest. Yeah. We're worried about social distancing. We're not doing God's will because the government has told us we can't get close. We're using that as an excuse. But the matter of it is, anybody you meet, you can share God's word with them. It, listen, listen, our homes should be more peaceful now than they've ever been before. Because you can't go nowhere now. You ought to spend your time in your home talking about God. And, and, and listen, the expectation is not for you to do it like I do it. Not to do it like Pastor Skin or Sean. But what, listen, use the intelligence God has given you. He's already given you his word. Use the word he's given you and the intelligence you have to make your home a peaceful home. Then God is fighting for you. Long as you're making your own rules, God ain't fighting for you. But if you're going by what the word of God says, God is fighting your battles for you. Man. In verse 15, and we're coming to a close. The captain of the Lord's host said to Joshua, no, let, let me back up. So Joshua says, he says, when, when the man said, when the man says, verse 14, say, and he said, no, rather I indeed come now as captain of the host of the Lord. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and bowed down and said to him, what has my Lord to say to his servant? The captain of the Lord's host said to Joshua, Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Listen, the captain of the Lord's host helps Joshua understand he is a subordinate in holy war. He is about to engage in. Listen, listen. This presence of this man lets Joshua understand you're not in charge. And until believers understand that we're not in charge, we will forever struggle with the things of this world. We have to understand that God has prepared himself or us to allow him to fight for us. So he tells Joshua, he says, he say, when, when Joshua hears who he is, Joshua falls down to the ground and puts his face to the ground. He understands, man, I ain't on your level. Until we start, stop bringing God to our level and let him stay on his level and respect him as being on his level and bow down to him, nothing is going to change. He tells him, he said, take your shoes off. Because where you're standing is holy ground. He said, he, he's letting Joshua know, you're not even worthy to stand where I'm standing. Take your shoes off. So Joshua's getting ready. He's getting ready to fight a holy war. As I studied this, I was wondering, I said, man, why would God tell him Tell them to always kill everything. He said, kill everything. The only thing you can take is the animals. Kill all the people. 
kill the men, kill the women, kill the children. Because you're fighting a holy war. And if you don't kill all of them, their pagan influence is going to influence you to live a pagan life. So that's what we Christians messed up at. We, we don't understand we're fighting a holy war, and we, let, we leave survivors. We want to take hostages. And all they do, the hostages and survivors influence us to stop using the intellect that God has given us to think, think through his word how our life should be directed. Listen, Facebook is good because we're spreading the good news. But some of us are on there not listening to church, but listening to the influence of the other world. And it's causing us not to celebrate who God is, not to recommit to who he is, and not to, to listen to the direction he has for our life. All right, I got two minutes. Let's go to Ephesians 6 and 10. Oh, I got it on the paper, though. It's on the paper. Ephesians 6 and 10. Say, finally, my brother, finally. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. I think some of y'all say it's the power. My translation says the strength of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. L listen what Paul is telling in Ephesians. When you are in warfare, let God be your strength. Let him be your Uzi. Let God be your M16. Let him be your double barrel shotgun. Let him be your boxing gloves. Let him be your rock wall or pit bull. Let him be your ADT. Be strong in the Lord yeah. and in the strength of his might. Well, How much strength do God have? All of it. All of it. And we don't even know. We say all, right. but, but that is, that's not a definition of who God is. Because God is more than all. Yeah. And Paul's encouraging the the, the New Testament, New Covenant believers to not rely on your own intellect or your own strength, but to rely on God. Because he knew we'd be, we'd, be, we'd be tech savvy. He knew we could Google stuff and get an answer. He said, don't Google, but God. Get your answer from God. Be strong in the Lord yeah. and in the strength of his might. Because there ain't nothing God can't do. Yeah. And there ain't nothing he didn't promise he would do. Yeah. And because he keeps his word, we can depend on it. Yeah. Any questions or any comments? Any questions or any comments? Any, any of you brothers on the phone got a question or a comment? He is awesome. I mean, um, I, 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 you know, um, during this pandemic, pandemic year and everything, and people, you know, without, someone without food and everything, but um, God always makes a way. He's making a way, yeah. And, um, and in my case, uh, uh, I, uh, you know, I have a pantry, a different pantry. And this, um, this Friday, I was out at this, when this pantry was out picking up food. And another place called us to come pick up food, and we didn't come get it. They were going to throw it away, you know? Yeah. And so uh, we went in and I stayed in our van and uh, picked up the food and take it to our pantry. But then uh, the guy, I told the guy I had a pickup truck that I could come back and get some more food and take his food where I, uh, where I live at and pass it out to the people in my building. Yeah. So I, I went in and I said, oh, Lord, it is just a blessing. And uh, uh, us, some of us black people growing up, well, we hate to see food be wasted or thrown away. Yeah. So, man, it, it was a blessing that I could just 
because the way he feels good, that I can help someone, you know, and um, and there's time and needed people who need help, you know? Yes, sir. And so it just, it, it just makes me feel good that I can do something in this particular time when people are going through this and that, you know? Yes, sir. It, it's, it's awesome. Yes, sir. That, that's God providing, Brother Matt. That's God providing. He, he's not letting anyone go hungry. He's providing. If you want it, there are places you can get it. Yes. All right. Uh, I hope something was said uh, that will bless you, help you walk closer with God. Uh, it's not. It's not my my. It's not my goal to show myself off. Yes. But I do want the truth of God's word to go forward. We got we got nothing to complain about. Because God is taking care of his own. And listen, I, I always say his own, but he's taking care of everybody. All over the world. Because if, if he wanted to, he could take us all out. At one time. But he's being gracious and merciful toward us and allowing us to live. Now, because we know we have his grace. His mercy, his love, his kindness. We need to live our lives dependent on him and 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 just obey what he say. All right, let's close in prayer. Gracious Master, we thank you once more for being gracious and a good God to us. We pray now that you would uh, take what you've given us this day, that you would plant it deep in our hearts, that it would begin to, we would begin to live it out in our lives giving you glory in all things. And we have to give you honor and praise, Master. As you give us an opportunity to use the intellect you've given us to, to use those things that you've put at our disposal to use for our betterment and for the ongoing of your kingdom. And we're going to be dependent on you, trusting you to fight our battles for us, Master. This we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen and thank God. Thank you, brothers. Have a good week.